Welcome to Nina's Knots Crochet. I'm Lenann. If you're new here, hey, thanks for stopping by, checking out my channel. My channel, well, it's all about crochet. A little bit about knitting, a lot about yarn, but mostly it's about my life and my journey through this fantastic yarning community. Returning subscribers, thanks so much for coming back, spending a little bit of your Tuesday with me. Today is Tunisian Tuesday. Yes, I'm still working on the Seattle scarf by uh, Heart, Heart, Heart Hook Home. Um, it is a, you know, it's a mindless crochet kind of thing. And I just pick it up when I need something to do with my hands. But I need to get it finished because I need to get the picture over to uh, Judy. But this thing is really, really long. This is going to be a fun, fun scarf. Just got this much left to go. Um, just using fingering white yarn and a five and a half, six and a half millimeter hook. So today, what are we going to do today for Tunisian Tuesday? Well, what I thought we'd do is uh, it's going to be kind of a yakky one because I want to talk to you about some of the designers that I have done patterns for and that I really, really enjoy. And of course, this is uh, heart hooked home and she's got several really easy to follow patterns for Tunisian on her website. Everybody I mention, I will put in the description box below. I'm not affiliated with any of these. I know none of these people personally. I just really enjoy their patterns and their designs. And I have done something from everybody I've talked about. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about today and haven't had an issue with it. So, um, the first one I want to talk to you about is Ashley at Tiny Couch Crochet. If you remember, um, a little while ago, not too long ago, I did a test knit, that really cute gingham duster style cardigan. I'll pop a picture in here if I can find it. Um, well, I was lucky enough to be selected to do another test pattern for her. She's writing a book, you guys. And these are patterns that are going to be in the book. I, she said, I, I'm pretty sure she said the book is coming out next year. Like to the point where this pattern doesn't have a name yet, but it's a cabled sweater. I don't know what I've gotten myself into, but I'm going to give it the good old college try. And the yarn came in yesterday from Knit Picks. And I picked out the same yarn that she used in her sample, which is the Heatherly Sport Weight from Knit Picks We Crochet. The color is called Cabana, and it's just a beautiful robin's egg blue. And there are 328 yards of an 80% acrylic, 20% merino wool, and it is a sport weight. So I'm gonna hank this up today, at least one of them, and I, or not hank it up, cake it up and then I'm going to do the um, swatch. Um, I might do a short later on today and show you the swatch depending on how far I get with it. I've never done cables before. I've never even done cables in regular crochet. So this is going to be interesting although she does have some really good tutorial videos um, that are linked in the pattern hyperlinked. So they're really good. So I should be able to do that, but that's going to be exciting. So Tuesdays, we're going to, we're going to show you progress on that on Tuesdays along with other things. So that's one. The other one I'm going to tell you about it. You all know Tony at TL Yarn Crafts. I'm not going to get into her a whole lot because everybody pretty much knows her, but I just did the, um, La Mia wrap again. She's got some really great, easy to do patterns and with tutorials. So check out Tony at TL Yarn Craft. One that is not on Ravelry, but is on YouTube is Mode Bespoke. And she does do videos in both English and Spanish. Um, but she's very, very, very easy to understand in English. She does not have a thick accent. Sometimes those that do both, their accents are really hard to follow. Hers is not. Now, I don't, I don't think I've done any of her sp patterns specifically as far as patterns are concerned, 
but not too long ago, within the last year and a half, two years, she did a crochet along where she did sam square samplers, you know, with each square is a different stitch. And she has that whole group out there um, on YouTube so that if there's a stitch that you want to learn how to do, and I haven't gotten to it yet, and somebody else hasn't gotten to it yet, she's a really good teacher. Um, so you can go and check out those videos for all the different uh, samplers. And she's got some really, she has socks. And one of these days, once I master in the round, I'm going to, I'm going to Tunisian crochet a pair of socks. Um, and she's got several patterns in Tunisian crochet to make socks. So I'm working up to it. Um, my, my goal is while I'm doing this sweater, I'm going to practice making like coasters, round coasters to practice in the round. Um, and if I can do it, we'll, we'll work it out together, but I gotta, I gotta figure out if I can do it first before I can teach you guys how to do it. So that is my plan is I want to learn how to do Tunisian in the round. Um, the next designer who I love her things so, so much. Again, I, I have not done any of hers yet, but I have two projects in my queue for her is Jess at the Make and Do Crew. She has a cowl called the Stained Glass Cowl. I'll pop a picture in here. Beautiful. I want to make this cowl, but again, it's in the round. I have to learn how to do that before I can make this. And the other one is the Bushland Wrap. And I am going to do that wrap. And I think I'm going to do it with um, either one of these blossom cakes or um, maybe the one of these, the Colorama Halos. I think those, um, ah, don't go, those uh, ombre effects will look beautiful in that wrap. So that is on my list for this fall to do for sure. Another one that I don't think I've heard a lot of people talk about is um, Janet Clare at Studio 22. Now I did her Tunisian honeymoon wrap probably a year ago. And I really liked it because it's got a, like a, um, a lacy open section. If I can find a picture of it, I'll put it in um, where you're doing yarn overs and you get this really lacy effect. It's so pretty. Um, and again, patterns are so easy to follow. Um, everybody that I've listed other than uh, Mode Bespoke are also on Ravelry and I have them together in a bundle on my Ravelry page. So if you're a friend of mine on Ravelry, you can get into my bundles and find my, it's called Tunisian Designers and it's got a whole bunch of people in there. And I always add people to it all the time. I'm, you should see my favorites. My favorite list just keeps getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> anyway, check out uh, Janet Claire Studio 22. She's got some really, really pretty designs that I really want to get back to. Um, hers are a lot of uh, one skein designs. Some are more, but that she has that that concept of the one skein design, which I really like. Um, another one is Lori at Ek Lori Designs. Um, I started the Serenity Shaw and I started it in the Upcycle um, Alpaca Blend and I've put it aside and I have forgotten about it until I was doing research for this video and I went, what did I do with that shawl? I have got to pull this shawl out and get finished on it because it's beautiful. And the design is, you use one color. The whole point is to use one color, but the design is in the, the way you stitch. It's so pretty. I'll pop a picture here of what it looks like. I have got to find what I did with that project bag. I have got to get that out and I have got to finish that shawl. I need Jan Alaskan crafter. She said she's doing it a finish it Friday. I think I have to do that too, Jan, because 
I, I realized there's so many things that I've started that I haven't finished. And I really need to do some of these. That Serenity Shaw is gorgeous. And I love it in the color that I picked out. I just need to get back to it. Um, squirrel. All right. Now, this, this last one. Um, this is my dream Tunisian uh, project. That someday... I may be good enough to make this. And this is from Martin up north. And his designs are freaking amazing. But this is called the Landscape Shaw. I'll pop a picture here. Someday, someday, I am going to be good enough to make that Shaw. It is, uh, it's in my favorites. It's in this, my Tunisian design bundle. Someday, you know, the good Lord willing and the creek don't rise, I am going to be good enough to make that shot. I think it is absolutely stunning. I just look at all the beautiful colors. One day. <laughs> One day. Anyway, that is just a short list, you guys. There are many, 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 many other designers out there. Um, oh, you know who I forgot? Andrea at Yarn Andy. I did her silver spruce cowl. I'll pop a picture here. I um, put it on my Ravelry as finished and uh, tagged her because, you know, that's how you do it. She sent me an email. She said, can I put it on my page? I was like, heck yeah, you can. So when you open her page to look at the spruce cowl or silver spruce cowl, mine is in there as one of the people who did it. I was like, holy cow, of course you can. But anyway, I loved how this cowl turned out and it is really easy to do. Um, and it is it's so beautiful and it's done with bulky weight yarn. I don't have a lot of bulky weight yarn, but this was um, some Madeline Tosh that I had. It was gorgeous. And I really loved the way it came out. It ended up being a Christmas present for my daughter-in-law and she loves it. So win-win for both of us. So, but she, Andrea, at Yarn Andy, has some amazing Tunisian shawls. Another one that is on my someday I'll be good enough to do list is her macaw shawl. What it looks like bird feathers. Holy Moses, is that thing gorgeous. Um, right now it's a little bit above my pay grade, um, a little bit above my skill set. But again, it's on my list of someday I'm going to be good enough to do that. Um, you know, I, I've learned within the last year, year and a half, not to set myself up for failure. I, not to have visions of grandeur that I can do all these things because, oh, it can't be that hard. Well, yeah, it can. And it will, um, all it will do is make you mad and make you sad because it's more than you can handle. So I've learned to accept my limitations as far as what I can and cannot do. Again, practicing giving myself some grace. Um, and I, I love what I'm doing. I, I love, love, love Tunisian. I, um, I don't know what it is about Tunisian that I like so much compared to regular crochet. And don't get me wrong. I am all about regular crochet because you know, that's, that's what I love to do. But when I start on Tunisian projects, I kind of get hyper-focused and I want to do all the Tunisian all the time. But I've got this going. I've got this going. I started a knit project. I have a test pattern for Anita that I'm working on. And I've got to get started on this test pattern for um, Ashley at Tiny Couch. Again, am I setting myself up for failure? I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping I can manage it all. Um, we're going to talk about the, uh, cardigan that I'm making for Sydney. We're going to talk about that tomorrow because today's all about Tunisian, but, um, yeah, 
I um, was talking to Lynette at Charm Grammy and Nancy at She's Got Yarn Too and Juan the Yarn Addict last night. And I am going to do another crochet along that I think we're going to start in September. I might push it off until October. It's going to be a scarf that you can do if you have just the straight hooks. You're not going to need cords for this one. So be on the lookout for that. Um, I'm trying to, to make Tunisian accessible and fun. I get that some of you don't like it, that it's not your thing, and that's okay. You know, there's a lot of things about to, uh, regular crochet that I have no desire to do. Like I look at all of you doing those beautiful graph gans. You will never see me do one. I will never, ever, ever do a graph gan that requires 17 colors in one row. I will never, ever do that. That is beyond something that sounds fun to me. It sounds like a tangled mess. I will never do it, but that's okay because you guys can do it and I'll just stick to Tunisian <laughs> and some other things. So guys, check out all these designers. They're really great. Um, they have everything from very simple things right on up to the most complicated thing you can come up with. Um, Mode Bespoke, she has some really cute uh, can cozies or cup cozies, like for coffee cups. Super cute. It's not hard to do. There's, you can do that right on up to this uh, landscape shawl from Martin up North, which is going to be like uber complicated. So there's something for everyone in the whole gamut of Tunisian. So with that, I am going to let you go, you guys. I hope that you check out these uh, channels, give them a, a look, see if it's something you might be interested in. Uh, remember to give yourself some grace. Be kind to yourself, but above all, be kind to everyone. And we will talk to you tomorrow for Whip Wednesday. Have a good one. Thank you.